everybody, first, please turn to Genesis. Genesis, the third chapter. Genesis, the third chapter. I want to make a few points here this morning, if the Lord allows it. First, just like anything. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day that you have created. Another day that whatever we couldn't get straightened out yesterday, today, in you, we could be better people, better saints, better women and men of God, Lord. Strengthen us that we not only be hearers, but also doers of the word. That we yearn more for you than we have yearned for anything else. Because everything else will fall into place if we seek ye first the kingdom of God and seek all of your goodness. And you said that you were added unto us. Strengthen us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for this opportunity to read the word. And that somebody, either now in the congregation or somebody over in the, the, the waves of where they can hear it in their homes, that they'll get the word and that there'll be a change. And we give you the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 All right. Uh, Genesis, the third chapter. Start at verse 1, please. Now the serpent mm -hmm. was more subtle than the beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, yes. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto, unto the ser serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. That's not right there. Doesn't that sound like your daily walk as you're going through and you know that you're supposed to pray, but the Lord, but the devil come along and give you a suggestion. You ain't got to pray today. Let's go. Let's go do this. I'm not going to name certain things because if I could. Let's go play the lottery. Well, you know what? They haven't had you Let's go hang out with the boys. Well, you know what? Like I said, I'm going to watch TV today. That's just like the devil. The devil's not going to change the way how he is. The devil has still has an agenda that he has to cover. And the thing is, just like back then in the beginning with Eve, Satan, if he could sift you, he would. Yeah. And he knows that we know the word. He knows where we know we need to be. But that doesn't stop him from trying to try to get us off point. Pay attention. Go ahead. But of the fruit of the tree, which mm -hmm. is in the midst of the garden, yes. God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof mm -hmm. and did eat, yes. and gave also unto her husband mm -hmm. with her, and he did eat. Yes. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig trees together and made themselves aprons. Yes. And they heard the voice of the Lord, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, mm -hmm. Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. Mm -hmm. And I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Mm -hmm. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God... Stop right there. That was verse 12, right? Yes. All right. Turn to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Yes. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Yes. Matthew, the fourth chapter. We're starting at verse 1 through 11. Yes. Then was Jesus led up mm -hmm. of the Spirit into the wilderness yes. to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, mm -hmm. he was afterward and hungered. Yes. And when the tempter came to him. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Now, we have one quick example between man and woman. Now, we got the king of kings. Yes. We got God himself. Yes. Satan does not care who you are. Right. Satan does not care what you know. Yeah. Satan don't care how strong you may feel that you are. Yeah. But the thing is, he is a deceiver. Yes. And he has an agenda. Yeah. Go ahead, read. Yes. Where are we at? Verse, verse 3. Verse 3. And when the tempter came mm -hmm. to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, mm -hmm. command that these stones be made bread. Yes. And he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word. Uh -huh. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city mm -hmm. and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, mm -hmm. if thou be the son of God, <laughs> cast thyself down. Yes. For it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Mm -hmm. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. Yes. And saith unto him, mm -hmm. All these things will I give thee, mm -hmm. if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Mm -hmm. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Mm -hmm. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, okay. and him only, him only shalt thou serve. Mm -hmm. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. If I could put a title on this today. Line up with the word. Yes. Satan gives gifts to. Yes. Stay away from his false suggestions yes. and his fool, his fool's gold. Yes. Let me say that again. Line up with the word. Yes. Satan gives gifts to. Yes. Stay away from his false suggestions and fool's gold. Yes. As we read in here. And through the whole Bible, as we can see from time to time that the devil decided to make a guest appearance. Yes. That he's going to come along and he knows that, here you go, oh, this week we're supposed to fast, saints. But this is the week that at your job, they're giving free hoodies, pizzas, and everything else. You're trying to fast. And everybody look at you, what's the matter with you? Is everything all right? Or here you go, they don't get a chance, you go out to your car. To leave them alone. You have to understand that as long as we're in this flesh, a lot of times people say it's my boss, man. It's my family members. We war and have a war within ourselves daily to live this righteous life. God makes it easy if we are saved. And I'm talking about Holy Ghost filled, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, remission of your sins, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. But Satan is still going to come about any time that he feels like when he feels like. Yes. Stay in line with God's word. Now, let's look at some words here that I had picked up in the Bible that as they were talked about. The word was subtitled. It's sensitive to be separated not only from God, but also from other manifestations of God's being. That's Satan. Sly. Having or showing a cunning or deceitful nature. Artful. Clever or skillful. Cunning. Having or showing skills and in, in, in one's A's of deceiving someone. Yeah. Craftiness, clever at achieving one's aim by indirecting or deceiving, deceit, deceitful method. Mm -hmm. Did y'all guys hear anything that I said that could be helpful to you? Anything. Yeah. Anything. 
What I mean by helpful, anything that the devil offers. You know, I said this a while ago. If one of us, if y'all guys were a boss and I came to y'all guys and y'all guys said, show me your resume. And I go and they look at the resume and it goes, roaming like a roaring lion, seeking whom I may devour, still killing and destroying. Would you hire me? We need to stop being optimistic about the adversary. Some of us play along and we don't even know it. When certain things come about, we look at the situation where we need to actually flee away from it or do just like Jesus had did here down in verse 11. When he had told in verse 10, go back right to verse 10, he said, and Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, 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 for it is written, for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, uh -huh. and him only yes. shalt thou serve. See, you have to understand that if you don't know the word, be the word. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of us are not scholars, but we know exactly what to do. Yeah, yeah. I heard a man say one time, he said, the Lord has set us free from shackles, but don't turn around playing with the chains. A lot of us are turning around playing with the chains. Yeah. We need to understand that the devil's here to destroy you. The devil's here to turn you, to sift you, to have it. I heard somewhere where it says misery loves company. There's nothing that the devil offers. And this is the point I'm trying to get at. Give me one second. If we look at, and you don't have to go there, in John the fifth chapter, yeah. when the man was at the pool, yeah. they say he was sick for 38 years. He had 38 years of illness. Yeah. St. John the ninth chapter. Yeah. The man blind at birth. When they one day they, they, they asked the disciples, asked the rabbi, what which one of the parents sinned? And Luke the eighth chapter. Talking about the woman who dealt with the hemorrhage for 12 years. Do you hear those numbers? Some of us don't even want to go through something for a week. A year. A day. For you mothers who are here. I remember watching my, my grandma starting on Monday. Preparing dinner for Sunday. We had to snack the peas. We had to do certain things. We stepped away from where it took a process to come and be how we got over yeah. to now we want to put in 15 seconds in the microwave and watch it go. Or for you guys who have those uh, air, fryers. air fryers, yeah. They talking about putting steak. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Some things I like to watch it go through the process. A lot of us don't want to go through the process. Yeah. And with the things that we go through, the devil will come around with suggestions. He'll come around and try to make it seem like that, you know, you can do it this way. Or even to the point, I don't understand this. Why is it that everything that we, let me ask you a question, this building here. Are you able to build this building without nails? You need nails. You need wood. You need workers. Why is it that everybody's trying to find a way around the process of building a house? God wants to build a people. And with him building us, it's a process that we have to go through from time to time. You know, I'm not going to talk about what I went through, but I was there not too long ago. And it's been barely three years. But you're talking about one person who suffered for how long did I say? One, one, one was for 38 years. The other one, the one, they said the man was born at birth. Yeah. They said man, they didn't say boy. So he was a man. So he was like that all his life. Yeah. The woman who had the, 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 the issue of blood for 12 years. Yeah. Why does it seem like that is our trial and tribulation come? We're trying to find a way to get over where we're supposed to take the steps. Of getting to our destiny. Yeah. Learning how to understand. That God's time is actually perfect. Yeah. Satan is constantly. Hammering at us. Yeah. 
We know that we have to pray and fast. But we go, no, I'm not going to pray and fast. But then get mad at the Lord because I didn't get what I need. We want the Lord. We got to understand what they say, exercising our faith in the Lord. Yeah. Exercise is a faith without work is dead, right? Yeah. Why is it that we want to constantly be blessed, but we don't want to put no effort in our lives to get what we need from the Lord? Yeah. And when the Lord blesses us, how he blesses us, we're satisfied with it. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all guys hearing what I'm saying? We're constantly in this race, knowing so many things are warring against us. Um, you notice that when the devil comes at you, it's a rush. But when the Lord says it, it's so mild and so calm. What you're saying is so, I need to move. The Lord said that he knows our end, but as well as he knows our beginning. So he knows those things that are before us. He knows that where we might need some strengthening, in a situation that we have to go through something for a time. What did um over there in that scripture with the man that was blind? John. Go to John the ninth chapter. St. John the ninth chapter. Just, just, just listen to what Jesus said to his disciples. And we have to understand. We're saying it's mysteries, but it's not a mystery. Go ahead, start at verse 1. And, and as Jesus passed by, uh -huh. he saw a man which was blind from his birth. From his birth. And his disciples asked him, uh -huh. saying, Master, who now, did sin? Yes. This man or his parents, mm -hmm. that he was born blind. Now listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered, uh -huh. Neither. Neither. Hath this man sin uh -huh. nor his parents. Yes. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Go ahead, verse 4. I must work the works. Of him that sent me. Yes. While it is day. Let's stop right there. Sometimes that the process or whatever that you're going through. I don't know anybody up in here who loves to suffer. I know I sure enough don't. And I feel that if you do, we're going to have to pray for you. <laughs> but I've learned that the mothers of the church of the old used to say, no cross, no crime. Yeah. That we don't want to go through something. But even when we're going through our something, God will comfort us yeah. that we'll be able to go through it. Yeah. God will comfort us and provide for us while we're going through our trial. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 the Lord has shown me something in my household for these last three years. Me and my wife, we have a budget. When we bought our house, we knew what would take, we thought, to keep that house up. For three years. Almost. It's been one income. And my investments. I got people that come to my house and go. How are you making it? You got some people looking for me to fail. Looking for the pink slip. Or looking for the orange slip to be up on the window. You alright dear brother? You paying your mortgage? God has had it. That the Lord has blessed me and my wife to pay every bill. All for that budget. Remember what I said at the beginning? If you want to hear God, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. We planned and thought this what it would take. But God is teaching me, showing me, if you have me, I'm all that it needs to be taken to make it through. All the bills are getting paid. Matter of fact, my wife and I one time sat back because we have family members. We, we give as if we get unto the Lord. They borrow. So my brother asked me, how are you giving me this money? And how long has you not worked? God will have it just like the Shulamite woman, that while your famine is going on, he'll make sure that every time whatever that you need and people around you need will have. Yes. Let the church say amen. amen. We need to truly let go of our process of the thinking and take on the process of thinking of what, how God thinks yeah. and depending on him. Yeah. Understanding that when situations come about when we're being tempted, suggestions, because I believe that over there were, because um, I thank the Lord for, um, what was his name? Um, um, Darren. Over in, in um, James. What does they say there? It says, uh, where is it at James? Uh, where it says, all good gifts. 
That's in James. James, the first chapter, verse 14. No? Yeah. Is that 14? No. No. What verse is that? Yeah. 17. Yeah. Read verse 17 in James 1. James 1, 17. Yes. Every good gift and every perfect gift is Every from above. good and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights. Yes. With whom is no variable, sorry, variableness, mm -hmm. neither shadow of turning. Listen to that. The devil, because I was talking to the brother, and the brother said, well, wait a minute. Tell me one time that, that the devil has given a gift. I said, he's never given a gift. Matter of fact, he was bold enough to tell Jesus, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all this. How's he going to give him something that is not even his? The devil will profane and say things that he claims that he does not have no control over, that we allow in our lives and our minds thinking that he does have control over, where all we have to do is seek God, trust God, and obey his word. That's why I said, line up with the word. I'll say here, stay away from Satan's false suggestions and fool's gold. He's constantly going to offer you something that he true enough can't back up. Yes. Show me where Satan has given life and gave it more abundantly. Yes. Show me somewhere where Satan has healed. Yes. Open up the eyes of the blind. Yes. Raise the dead. Yes. Satan will constantly come into your life and make you think that if you hang with him, which is kind of crazy. Because a lot of us got here, we were wounded. We were hurt. Yes. We were sick. Both spiritually and naturally. And we our eyes were open to what the Lord can offer. Yes, but we still will look upon the devil and consider what he offers. Which is a setback. Yes. And you know what? What did God say? God said in his word that Satan was a liar even from the... Hello. So if he's a liar... And he offered Jesus all that. Do you think he was going to cash in? Constantly offering false suggestions and fool's gold. Yeah. Trying to get you off your track from you serving God. And you start, and, and you know, these things. Yeah. I know that some of us are sick in our bodies. We have certain things. And I'm going to speak on this. Gina, how has I been walking all week long on this left knee? Yeah. Limping. And literally to a point, because I can't bend it, because the doctor says I have arthritis up in it. So at times I'm walking like this. But I kept on walking. And this morning when I woke up, I was like, Lord, every Sunday when I wake up, and when it's time to come to church, the Lord moves. Thank you, Jesus. Because I depend on him yes. and not on the doctor. I heard a doctor one time, because most doctors are not saved. This saved doctor says that no matter what procedure that I do, I have the honor to do the procedure, but God is the one that does the healing. Yes. We need to understand that we have to line up ourselves in the word and understand that in the word is life. Yeah. In the word is going to get you to your destiny. Yeah. In the word will never have it that your lack of anything, uh, anything that you can think of, anything to come, or anything to be. Yeah. Because he is a keeper. Yes, he is. I think it said over there in the Old Testament, he'll keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on your things. On him. On him. Yes. The deception. The devil don't care. I think I heard Elder Robinson say one time, you can go to bed and speak in tongues and live a holy life in your dreams. That ain't going to stop the devil from trying to tempt you Amen. and offer you suggestions and fool gold. Yes. You know, my grandfather used to tell me, and I heard that the old time was to tell you when you go places, my, my parents actually taught me the value of a wooden nickel. There's no value. Yeah. The value, the price, so you see Satan Let me see here. Like a craftmatic adjustable bed. Yeah. <laughs> Easy to get into, yeah. but very hard to get up. Y'all yeah. guys, I'm not going to lie to you. At the department store, they probably got my face pasted all over the place. You don't believe me? Ask my wife. When she likes to go shopping, if I can't find a chair, you can find me in the bed department. Yeah. I'm up there just stretched out. 
I said, well, it's here for us to test out. <laughs> then my wife goes, it's time to go. No, 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 no. Come over here and enjoy this for a while. That's exactly how Satan is with his, his, his deceptions. That he'll put you in a situation. But once you get in that situation, you got to do that time. You got to pay. They would say you got to pay the piper. You got to pay for whatever that you decide to get into. Many gifts, many suggestions Satan offers you without the sales tag, leaving out the cost that you're going to have to pay. Do you understand if we don't do it this way, yes. hell will be our home? Yes. I know people go, I'm getting tired of hearing that. You better, you better get used to hearing it. Because yes. there's only two places that you're going to be. And they're talking about torment. I've never known anybody. You know how, you know, I, I know I, I said this with my boys when I was part of the gang. You know, we all going to go to hell. We're going to have a party. Ain't going to be no party down there. No. <laughs> I've never seen nobody going through pain having a party. That means that, you know how some people say the person that you didn't like is going to be down there with you? You're going to be tormented, and you ain't going to have no time to pay attention to a person to the right or to the left. Right. They say it's going to be constant falling, darkness, worms will not be devoured, and you're going to be tortured forever. These are the things that the devil offers you that we constantly, oh, I'm sorry, he offers you but doesn't show you. What, what was that? Um, that I'm not going to name the company, but that big bait and switch. I worked for him. What they would do is you would go out there, because I was a good salesman. They would have this TV. Y'all probably know who I'm talking about. And I was good. I told anybody, I, I'll, sell, I'll sell a slug some salt mm -hmm. and sell a blind man some glasses. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't like was in the article of this company that I worked for, they would have just this one, they would have this TV on sale. Make everybody get there. And that TV was only, it was only one TV. And it was a TV on display and you couldn't have it. But the way was to get you in the store so they could sell you other things. That's exactly how the devil is. He want to get you in the door. Get you in the door. Or where at one time you was in the light, now you're in darkness. And now he's going to sell you other things. You got people, because I was there, who had backslid it, who has not made it back. Yes. God said constantly, if you're living that life, there's a possibility he can turn you over and set you up into where you have a reprobate mind. Yes. Now you don't know how to get back. Yes. Now you don't know. Here you go. I'm going to tell you something, saints, and I had experienced it. You know right from wrong, but for some reason, that demonic spirit will speak to you and you constantly do exactly what it says, even unto death. We have to understand that these are high times. Your fishermen, you know high tide, that's when you want to go out there. You don't go out there no low tide. You want the high tide, that's when the fish are coming in. This is the time for us to truly recognize, to line ourselves up with the word. Understand, and it's not what Ella Robinson says, it's not what I say, but it's what thus saith the Lord. We have a few people that call up Ella Robinson and myself. This is a family affair. Let me, let me, let me get a little comfortable here. If somebody has a question, if somebody has a situation they're dealing with, the Bible says to let all the sick, if there's a problem in the church, to call upon the elders. But it seems like these days in time, people got too much pride. Yeah. Wasn't that my test son? Lay pride to the side. Yeah. Pride is going to have you bust hell straight wide open. Yeah. We can sit down, we can talk. Yeah. We can sit down, we can pray. Yeah. Matter of fact, you know, Sister Reed, you remember when we was up at the hospital? Yeah. I was going up there to comfort her, but she don't know. But as I was leaving, she was actually comforting me. Yes. That's one thing of having that mindset that is no big eyes and little U's, but us coming together, helping one another. Yes. I'm quoting scriptures, and at times, Mother Reed is correcting me and going, no, that's not what it says. It says this. Did I get mad at you? I say, all right, amen. 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 Whatever happened to that family affair that Jesus is trying to draw us together so that one day, 
There won't need to be no son because God will be the son. Yes. That will have that body, that body, that new name. But I still know you as Wilbur, but you'll have a new name. Yeah. Our glorified body that he promised us. Yeah. Is it worth over fool's gold and suggestions, false suggestions to lose that all? Yeah. You got a lot of churches. I think I was saying up in prayer that we come out awake and we come to church for church. Not come to church. I want to see. I want to see what Mother Brown's new hat she's gonna wear on Sunday. I'm coming to church to see what she's doing. Yeah. No, I'm coming to church for Jesus. Yeah. To hear the word to get better, yeah. so that I can be something better. The Bible, you know, Robinson was saying somewhere that what it profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. But you got a lot of people in this time that are gaining the world and not knowing that their soul is in jeopardy to be lost forever. Stop being optimistic about Satan. He means us no good. Yes. When you get a chance, just look up these references. Because I love it. Because everybody be like, well, show me scripture. Matthew's the fourth chapter, verse three. Yes. He's a tempter. Yes. Ruler of demons. Matthew's 12th chapter, verse 24. Can we read it? Okay, sure. Go to Matthews, the fourth chapter, verse three. Oh, you want to go back to that one? Go to Matthews, the fourth chapter, verse four, three. He's four a three. Yes. And when the tempter came. The tempter came. Who else they talking about? Yep. Uh huh. Go ahead. To him, he said, "If thou be the Son of God, yeah. command that these stones be made bread." He's a tempter. Yes. Okay. Matthew. Uh, go to Matthews twelve twenty four. Twelve and twenty four. But when the Pharisees heard it. They said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Mm -hmm. He's the ruler of demons. Yes. Go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Yes. He's a liar. Yes. I'm just trying to help you to understand that this man don't mean you nothing but hurt. Yes. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Yes. In whom mm -hmm. the God of this world mm -hmm. hath blinded the minds of them blinded. which believe not, mm -hmm. lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. He's a liar. Yes. Go to 1 John, the 5th chapter, verse 18. Yes. Wicked one. Yes, yes. I don't understand how people can constantly mess around with Satan and actually know what he's what, what is his worth? Yes. What is he going to offer you? Yes. You know how we used to, the women used to say back in the 70s, you try to talk to a girl, she'd go, what have you done for me lately? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. What's the verse again? Verse it was 1 John 5 and 18. 5 and 18? Yes. And we know that whosoever is born of God mm -hmm. sinneth not. Yes. But he that is begotten of God mm -hmm. keepeth himself. Yes. And that wicked one that comes wicked. him not. Come on now. He's a wicked one. Yes. And uh, 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, verse 8. Yes, yes, yes. Now this is right here. I told you. If I came to y'all guys with this resume, would y'all guys hire me? Yes. First Peter five and eight. First Peter five and eight. Yes. Uh, five and eight. Be sober, mm -hmm. be vigilant. Yes. Because your adversary the that, devil. The devil. As a roaring lion mm -hmm. walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. A beast. Looking yes. to destroy you. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we're going to continue on following him. Yes. We're going to continue on letting him take the lead. Yes. We need to let the Lord. I heard people say that, you know, I've changed partners. Yes. I'm going to let Jesus take the lead. Yes. And how are we going to do that? By reading his word. Yes. By praying and salting God. Because God says that we are to work out our soul, souls, our own. Yes. Our own. Not each other, our own soul salvation, soul salvation yes. with fear and trembling, yes. seeking Him. Yes. How can people really call God a friend of God and don't spend no time with Him? Mm -hmm. I asked a very strong question there. How can people call God? Or oh, here you go. The world today, because I heard a preacher say it, that just because they have a song and they put Jesus' name up in it, 
Oh, I know the Lord. I could not tell you that I know this lady right here if I did not take the time out to spend time with her. I had to spend night and day with her. Yes, it was a battle. But I did everything that I could to prove to this woman that I was the one. That is the same way with more strength we should do to Jesus. Of seeking him. Telling him that I'm the one that I want to serve you. That I want you to be my Messiah, my healer, my everything. Stop treating Jesus, God, like an emergency switch. That's another thing we do. You know, when we're in a fire, and time the case for fire, pull out, pull, pull lever. You don't use him in case of emergency. Yeah. Be honest with you, in your whole life as you breathe is an emergency. Because just like I said, the devil is constantly suggesting and giving fool's goal. So serve him. Keep him. There is nothing that you can do in life truly without God. What they said, give honor where honor is due. Are you truly giving honor where honor is due? You woke up this morning. Amen. You know who you are in your right minds. Amen. You was able to wash and eat and taste your food this morning. Amen. There's somebody this morning that don't have just those few things I named. Yeah. And we take it for granted. Yeah. Let me see here. Uh, mm -hmm. what was that? One second. The devil is just like a credit card. Money or credit given to you up front. That you have to pay back with hidden fees. Amen. Understand. There's nothing that he can offer you. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I'm pretty much all turned on this one right here. You have to understand, saints, that we have to be in this race with a mindset that we're going to seek him. Yeah. That we're going to get him in our lives. Those ones who are seeking for the Holy Ghost understand that in time you will get the Holy Ghost. Yes. It, when, Ella Robinson, did the Lord let you know that night that you received the Holy Ghost, you was getting the Holy Ghost? Not exactly, no. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. But trust me, when it comes, it's going to come like a rushing wind. Yes. You're going to feel different. Yes. You're going to feel brand new. I think Ella Robinson said he wanted to go to the hospitals and tell all the sick, come on out, you're no more sick no more. You're going to have that boldness on the inside, knowing that everything is done by God and can't nobody stop you. Please, line yourself up with the word. Yes, Jesus. This depends on your life. I would love, you know, this, this is something that is not by popular demand. You know, I'm supposed to preach about naming and claiming. You know, I'm supposed to make you dance around and everything. And all that dancing and all that stuff is extracurricular things. But are you receiving salvation? Yeah. Are you receiving Amen. the word? Are you truly being convicted in your heart, understanding that if I don't get my life right, my eternal place will be in hell? Yeah. Real quick, Darren and I was talking. And we was talking about how people are just coming into churches and just shooting it up. We're living in a time, I think Darren has said, that there's, right now to the day, there's been more deaths than actually time in this year. I said, Darren, it's funny you say that. Because now when I wake up, before I look over at my wife, I'm getting my life together. Because you got people that are up in bed and there's drive-bys and they get shot in their bed sleep. Amen. Me being up in the pulpit right now, we're stopping for somebody coming in and taking my life. But I need to understand that I have that mindset to get my life together by every means, by every second that I walk. Don't take it for granted, Lord Jesus. We sent we we on commission and omission. We know some things and we don't know them things. So Lord Jesus, show me those things that I sin. Those things I know that are there, forgive me. And those things that I don't know that are there, show me that through you, I will no longer visit them in the name of Jesus. That you have that sincere heart.
They're not saying you get to constantly walk around going, Lord, you forgive me, Lord, you forgive me, Lord, you forgive me, Lord, you forgive me. No, just having a mind understanding that as I walk, I'm walking the walk of the Lord. Yeah. I'm talking the talk of the Lord. Yeah. I had a family member say it to me one time because I was a procrastinator. I would tell her, hey, check this out. This week, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to look for this and look for that. And she looked at me and she said, don't speak about it, baby. Do it. Be about it. Yeah. It's time for us to start speaking about what we're going to do and be who we are. Yeah. And that is people in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Line up with the word. Satan gives gifts. Please stay away from his false suggestions. The fool's good. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. Hold your head.